Hi everyone, welcome to the next part of the book. So we just finished and Frankie had chucked a whole cabbage out of the window. Really, it too had been launched out of the window, once again landing somewhere in the power station, which was now giving off red hot heat. By this time, Mum was beginning to become suspicious. I hadn't even cooked that yet, she exclaimed. I like it raw, Ma. More nutri... 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 The boy was searching for the word nutritious, but couldn't find it anywhere in his brain, so settled for something simpler. More things in it! In it! Mum wasn't exactly sure what her son meant, but nodded anyway. Yes, good boy. Chocolate! Yes, yes, of course, coming right up. For pudding, Mum had planned to feed her son his most dreaded food, rhubarb. Now, Frankie, let's see what a good boy you really can be. If you eat your rhubarb, you can have two squares of chocolate. In fact, you can finish off the whole bar. As she turned round to pick up the bar, Mum noticed the window was wide open. That power station is very hot today, she said to herself. Before shutting the window, a piece of rhubarb flew past her head at speed. Whoosh! It bounced off the pane of glass, boing, and struck the lady on her face. Splat! Oh dear! Frankie, what on earth do you think you're doing? demanded Mum. She was furious at having been fooled like this. I think that rhubarb thingy is still alive. As soon as I bit into it, it ran off. Did it indeed? Yeah, it ran across the table, then did this big leap thing off it to the window. Mum stared at the boy. She was fuming. Frankie knew the game was up. He hadn't seen that look since he'd swapped the family dog for a bar of fudge. You haven't eaten a single fruit or vegetable I've served up all day, have you? Frankie was silent for a moment. Yeah, I have, Ma. Really? Yeah, I, I took a nibble out of one. Which one? A pea? You ate one pea? Now, I about offer it. It was ranky danky doodah, totally disgustable, reporting never again. Right, Ma, give me the rest of that chalky bar now. There will be no chocolate for you, young man, cried Mum. Being called young man meant he was in serious trouble. Now you get off to bed at once. But Ma, bed. Frankie shrugged and sloped off upstairs to his bedroom. He muttered something about not caring, but he did really. Nobody wanted to go to bed at six o'clock. Even babies were allowed to stay up later than that. Oh gosh, he doesn't look very well, does he? Frankie harumphed to himself as he slumped down on his bed. He stared out of the window. It was still light. Something strange was going on in the nuclear power station. Red lights were flashing everywhere and workers were running around in what looked like a panic. Bed! Now, shouted Mum from the boy's bedroom door as he slid under the covers. She drew the curtains. Tomorrow we're going to start all over again. What? Guess what's for breakfast. Dunno, something vomitious you wish and all fruity vegetable I guess. You are dead right, young man. Rhubarb. Nah, the boy bawled. Yes, rhubarb for breakfast. With that, Mum stormed out of the boy's bedroom, dramatically slamming the door as she did so. Bang! The lady then had a sit down in a darkened room. She couldn't remember ever being so angry. That night, Frankie found it hard to sleep. The thought of having to eat rhubarb for breakfast made his stomach turn. He tossed and turned for hours before finally drifting off. <sighs> The sound of something or someone ha, tapping on the window woke him up. Tap, tap, tap. Frankie's eyes opened in terror. This was one of those dreams where you dream you're awake. Tap, tap. There it was again. 
tap, tap, tap. Again. The boy was shaking with fear. Who or what was out there? His bedroom was on the top floor of the house. It was too high for anyone to reach. Tap, tap. There was only one thing for it. Frankie would have to peek out of the window. He slid out of bed as quietly as he could and pulled the curtain back the tiniest bit. Ah! screamed the boy. Outside it was some kind of monster. It looked like a cabbage, but it was about a thousand times the size and was glowing a luminous green colour. It tapped on the window with its leafy hand. Tap, tap. It wasn't going any going away. Frankie slowly opened the curtains. What was this creature? A giant alien from outer space? What do you think has happened, everybody? Frankie! It boomed. The thing knew its name. Yeah, 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 he stammered. Frankie, the fussiest child in the world. I guess so. Who are you? I'm the cabbage you so cruelly threw out of the window. Yes, we fruit and vegetables do have feelings, you know. Why are you all big and talking? You threw me so high I went down the chimney of the power station and ended up in the nuclear reactor. What? The boy couldn't believe his ears. Behind the giant cabbage, Frankie could see that smoke was billowing from the power station. It was clear that the pace was going to melt down. Now it's time to get my revenge. If you won't eat me, I will eat you. With that, the cabbage's leafy hand smashed through the window and grabbed the boy's arm. Ow! he screamed. Frankie wrestled free and rushed out of his bedroom. He raced down the stairs and out onto the street. He ran as fast as his legs would carry him. Soon he was out of breath and had a stitch. A diet of cake, crisps, biscuits and chocolates had left the boy unfit. Limping down the road, Frankie didn't dare look back. Behind him he could hear a thundering sound. After a few more steps, the boy couldn't, believe him, couldn't help himself. He just had to look back. At the front of the giant glowing cabbage. <gasps> Get him! It boomed as it bounced along. Behind the cabbage was a huge glowing white and green thing. It was hopping down the road. What vegetable is that, everybody? Can we remember? Nasty little runt, it shouted. Let's digest him slowly. Make him suffer. Next to the humongous cauliflower were a hundred bouncing green spheres. They were all about the size of beach balls. Frankie realised these must be the peas that he'd flicked out of the windows. The peas seemed to be crying, I can't believe he did this to us, one said, fighting back the tears. Everyone likes peas. I don't. Peas are puketastic. Let's teach him a lesson, cried another pea. Yes, shouted a chorus of them. The fruits were not to be outdone by the vegetables. A giant grapefruit, a ginormous banana, a colossal pear and an enormous pineapple were all following close behind. Keep up, said the grapefruit. I'm keeping up, dear, hissed the pear. You know I bruise easily. Me too, chimed in the banana. The pineapple was pushing past them all to get at the boy. Out of my way, commoners, exotic fruit coming through. It bellowed in a posh voice. Frankie was frozen in fear. The fruits and vegetables surrounded him, all ready to pounce. Please, I beg you, don't eat me. I promise I'll eat my five a day. Just then, a voice came from far off. It was a ginormous rhubarb. The boy is mine, boomed the rhubarb from the roof of the house. The vegetable was lit from behind by a silvery moon. What? demanded the cabbage. Frankie looked at the tall pink vegetable thing. I didn't even manage to fling you out the window, the boy protested. You bounced off the glass and hit me in the face. I know, replied the rhubarb. That is a crime not just against me, but against rhubarbs of the world. I had to avenge them, so I crawled across the kitchen floor, leaped through the cat flap and jumped out to the fence to get inside the power station. From there, I found my, say, my way into the nuclear reactor. Bingo! A nuclear rhubarb. Your worst nightmare! With that, the monstrous vegetable leaped off the roof of the house. It flew through the air, opening its mouth wide, revealing its terrifying rhubarb teeth. Ah! 
screamed the boy as his head was munched off. All the fruit and vegetables pounced. I want an arm, shouted the cabbage. I want a leg, exclaimed the cauliflower. Save the rest for us, said the fruits. It was a feeding frenzy. The boy was gone in seconds. The peas bounced up and gobbled down what was left of him. And that was the end of Fussy Frankie. So children, please remember this important lesson. Eat your greens or one day they might eat you. And that is the end of Fussy Frankie. <gasps> dun dun dun. I wonder if you can come up with your own story of a fussy eater. Maybe it's not Fussy Frankie this time. Maybe it's Fussy Felicity. That would be very, very funny. <gasps> okay, boys and girls, let's get back to another story next week. If you've got any requests, let me know. It can be from this book or if you have the other one, I can get it from there too. <gasps> Enjoy.